When confronted with a challenge or a crisis, do you feel that you control its outcome? Well, if you do, then you have what psychologists call a strong internal locus of control. Unfortunately, especially with our current crisis, many feel that the outcomes faced daily are outside of their control. They lack the motivation, well, and the resources to shift from an external locus of control to a thriving internal locus of control. And that's what we're talking about this week. Your locus of control is the defining characteristic of how you respond to events that happen in your life and more importantly, how you react to them. So what exactly is locus of control? Well, the concept of locus of control began in 1954 when psychologist Julian Rotter described a social learning theory that describes our behaviors as controlled by two things, rewards and punishments. She opined that an individual's future behavior or, or more specifically, pursuing a goal hinges on if the individual was rewarded for a similar behavior in the past. Now, Rotter continued her work and in 1966 constructed a theory of locus of control. As Nicola Tyler and colleagues describe, Rotter defines locus of control as the degree to which a person perceives an outcome as being contingent on their own action or those of external forces existing along a continuum from a more internalized orientation to a more externalized orientation. Individuals who hold the belief that outcomes are dependent on their own personal or behavior or personal characteristics are said to have an internal locus of control. In contrast, those with an external locus of control believe that life's outcomes are determined by forces outside of their control, such as things like independent of their own actions or as a result of fate, luck, or chance are dependent on powerful others or unpredictable due to the complex nature of the social environment. That's a lot of saying that why is your internal locus control so important in your life? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. It's important to understand that locus of control is a continuum. It's not a have it or you don't. It's not black or white. Some specific habits and behaviors can motivate you to have a more robust internal locus of control. So a person with a strong locus of control will reap the rewards that life has to offer. Now, the person is confident and self-motivated to pursue, achieve, and exceed their goals. These are what great leaders and physicians are modeled after. Now, be careful though. A healthy balance is needed. Four individuals with a strong internal locus of control can be challenging to work with as they feel that they must and need to control and plan out for everything. Now, more importantly, and when things fail and they quickly blame themselves when truly the event was truly out of their control. So a helpful tool that can help you quantify your locus of control can be find at, found at Mind Tools Interactive Locus of Control Assessment. You can find the link on the blog post that accompanies this video. So first thing, friends, is create a plan to improve your internal locus of control. Now that you've taken a moment to take the assessment, there are potential opportunities to create more motivation to improve your locus of control. So let's begin. Number one, stop the negative self-talk. Dr. Dan Siegel, he's a neuropsychiatrist and best-selling author of Mindset, explains that you should corral your right brain thinking by naming or labeling the negative thought. When you notice the negative self-talk, it is far more effective to appeal to your left brain's more logical and reasonable side to calm the storm of negative thoughts. With focus, you'll notice that a lot of your negative self-talk is, well, repetitive. And as soon as you hear that inner critic of yours, label it. As an example, if you catch yourself criticizing yourself because you will miss an intubation, you will say to yourself, well, there I go again, putting myself down for missing another tube. This jolts the brain from the emotional aspect of things to a more rational approach. You quickly realize that the negative talk is, well, just a thought, not a reality. A bit of warning, though, be gentle with yourself. When you label the negative thought, tame it in a soothing and a compassionate inner voice. You're not going to war with your mind. You're just shifting perspectives here for just a bit. Number two, friends, take responsibility for your actions. Many times we are quick to blame others. It's this person's fault, or I didn't have this piece of equipment, or the computer system crash. Of course, there'll be dozens of reasons that can potentially be the reason. And also, you may be correct, but ask yourself again with a calmer mind. Well, why am I feeling this way? Now, our work environments are imperfect systems, as are we. But once you accept 
the concept of extreme ownership, you will continue to struggle with gaining control of your emotions. Extreme ownership is a concept championed by Jocko Willick. He's a U.S. Navy SEAL where the, he says the individuals take full responsibility for what has or is happening no matter what. Now, I've spoken about servant leadership in the past and the incredible power it has toward you, the physician, and as well as your team. Now, take it one step farther, extreme leadership requires you to actively look for solutions rather than focusing on the negative complaints and criticisms. Now, if you haven't had a chance to read Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink and Leif uh, Babin, do yourself a huge favor and buy it today. It will completely change and transform your approach to your day-to-day -day interactions with, with your team and your home life. Moving on, friends, number three, to succeed, you must take risks. When you are doing well in your life, it seems like you are unstoppable. We enter this field of study to be successful. Chances are that we are going to be faced with failure. Now, we must anticipate it and accept it. Accept it for what it is, an opportunity to begin the process of learning from it. Now, after a perceived failure, we can feel defeated or inadequate. And this can tend, this leads to, to negativity and doubt. And I challenge you to learn from a bad experience and benefit from the fear and paralysis it creates. Now, if you succeed in everything, you are not taking risks. You are playing it too safe, my friends, and not growing to your full potential. There's a great quote that says, a smooth sail never made a skilled sailor, and that's from Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, to become better at risk-taking, well, you start small. In their wonderfully written book, Great by Choice, Chip Collins and Morton Hansen recommend fire bullets, then cannonballs. The bullets represent something that is low risk and low cost, whereas the cannonballs represent the much more significant risks. Friends, do not allow the risk of failure to prevent you from trying new ventures. The more you risk and fail, the greater your chance of ultimate long-term success. So the difference between average and extraordinary is your perception and response to failure. Our negative perception of ourselves can ultimately carve away at our wellness, leading to physician burnout. Realize that failure is not the enemy, but a necessary part of our daily journey toward wellness. Now use the lessons to incorporate in your daily practice and welcome the valuable lessons of failure, which can teach us. So friends, get started today. The key to developing the skills toward an internal locus of control is consistency and perseverance. Individuals with a strong internal locus of control are shown to have more grit, they work harder, and stick with a goal longer. This is the heart of creating a life well lived, a life of purpose and intentionality. So all too often, we allow life to just happen. Let's change this today. Take control of your future and implement the tools that we just talked about to start toward your goals and version of your success. So onward and, up for, onward and upward, my friends. Until next time, be good to yourself and each other. We'll talk again soon. Bye.